All right, so let us carry on with the topic of neurotransmitters and, uh -huh, and that process. Um, in the last, I believe this is like our eighth lecture now. Um, in the last lecture video, we were talking specifically about the synapse. So let me just real quickly uh, review, remind you what we were talking about there. So the synapse is the space between the axon terminals and the dendrite. As I like to say, this is where all the action happens. This is, the, this is where the cool stuff happens. Um, and I, we went over a few illustrations to sort of, yeah, to put some pictures with what was going on. Um, in this one, you have the vessel, and the vessel is the one that has the molecules and the chemicals. The chemicals come up to the cleft or the edge, the synapse. It releases the chemical that floats across to the other side. It either fits in the key, oh, excuse me, it either fits in the lock or it doesn't. Um, if it doesn't, then it may float around out here for a bit and be recycled or reuptaked, re, re reuptook into the previous, um, and then to the previous neuron, and then the process starts all over again. Uh, sometimes we can take prescription drugs or illicit drugs that block this process of reuptake, in this case, inhibiting the reuptake process. Uh, when we inhibit the reuptake process, then that means that that chemical, in this case, it's dopamine, stays in the synapse longer and gives it another chance to unlock the key or to unlock, I mean, sorry, to unlock the lock. Um, another time. Okay, so there are different kinds of neurotransmitters and the neurotransmitters basically these brain chemicals that are in the vessels and these neurotransmitters basically do, do uh, two basic things. They either increase the activity because you'll remember that the action potential means it's either an all or nothing. So they either increase the brain activity and keep that process going or potentially speed it up or they slow it down or make it stop. And that's what we're, so it, they either excite or they inhibit. Here's the, here's the thing, is that in some cases to excite um, a neurotransmitter may actually cause something to stop. For instance, um, alcohol. Alcohol acts as a depressant, because, but when you first start drinking alcohol, we might get kind of silly and goofy that's because it inhibits the frontal lobe part of our brain that would say, oh, you shouldn't dance on the table or you shouldn't talk to that girl or make out with that person in the closet. So it inhibits an activity of the brain that, so it's sort of like it puts on the brake, right? And when you, for brakes to work, you have to put more energy, you have to use the brakes more in order for them to put the stop on things. So it may cause something to increase, but if it causes it to increase, it actually causes it to the increasing of something to slow something else down. Yeah, you increase the pressure on the brakes and it causes something to slow down. Okay, um, I have a couple better examples later on. So these only specific synapses acts like a key and a lock. Um, the next couple of, oh, I guess I got two or three different slides that actually list some neurotransmitters. And I'm not, wouldn't ask you to name them all, but I do think it's kind of important that you know at least a couple of them by name. Um, so that, you know, if you read about them in a newspaper magazine, in a news magazine, or hear about them on the news, you'll at least know what they mean. Um, some of the pictures, the photographs over here were photographs I took, actually a few years ago, we used to have this really great little cooperative health food store in Manhattan. And so these were taken in the store. But this is an example of the 5-THP which as I mentioned before, is the amino acid that metabolizes into serotonin. And serotonin is implicated in mood and, and sleep and overall a sense of well-being. Okay, so here on this slide, you have some of the more probably familiar ones. You have dopamine, serotol serotonin, acetylcholine, and norepinephrine. Dopamine, and I'll, I'll sort of highlight what I want you to remember about them. Dopamine is right here, pleasure and reward. Um, I mentioned in a previous lecture that you'll notice that there's themes, that certain characteristics, oh, I forgot to start my timer, that certain characteristics run together. And in this case, if you'll notice the dopamine, right, you have attention and learning because you have to attend to something if you're going to learn it. 
you have reward and pleasure. Obviously, pleasure is a kind of reward. So you need enough dopamine to sort of pay attention so that you can learn, but it also creates this sort of feeling. So put those together and dopamine gives you pleasure and reward from learning. Oh, there you go. Why it feels good to figure something out, right? Um, so cocaine and nicotine increase your dopamine level. Uh, too little dopamine, you got some Parkinson's too much, and you actually get some hallucinations, right? So not too much. Serotonin, this is interesting to me because many, many of my students are familiar with serotonin as it's related to sleep, um, but it's also very critical in mood, hence the term, uh, hence all the, the prescription drugs that increase your serotonin level. Um, one of the things that I have been on, I'm a long-term SSRI user. I take um, fluoxetine, which is the generic name for Prozac, for the last, oh my gosh, 12 years I've taken this. And one of the things that I discovered was when I started taking it, my mood improved, but I also started taking naps. I sleep better now that I take an antidepressant than I did before. I sleep more. I sleep significantly more. Um, acetylcholine, right? Acetylcholine is an, also an excitator. It is implicated in your motor, right? Memory and arousal. And again, I want to note that these two things go together. If you're going to remember something, you better be alert, right? You have to be alert enough in order for you to remember too little acetylcholine. Um, and it seems to be implicated in Alzheimer's, which would kind of make sense because if you have to have enough in order to remember things, norepinephrine. Um, an EpiPen, right? So this is uh, norepinephrine, it would also be like adrenaline. Um, norepinephrine, arousal and mood. Again, you know, mood is implicated in how much energy you have. Cocaine increases norepinephrine and too little norepinephrine causes depression. Um, I should save that for another, for another conversation, but so the SSRI Prozac that I take is considered an old drug or a dirty drug. And what that means is it is, it is described as an SSRI that it increases the, it inhibits the reuptake of, of serotonin, but it also affects acetylcholine and norepinephrine. So what I don't know is, I mean, I can't say for certain that I needed more serotonin to feel better because it may have been how the implications for acetylcholine or norepinephrine. Um, and I think I'll probably talk more about that in another video, in another video lecture. This is just a picture of basically what I would just said. You have your normal neuron, these are dopamine, but in the case of Parkinson's, the neuron is not producing enough uh, dopamine and it's making movement very difficult. So these would be like those friends over there that want the bananas and they're not getting it, and so they're not acting right. They're goofy, right? So in this case, and it causes, so if you've ever seen a, you know, those Chanix commercials, right? And for people that stop smoking, what Chanix effectively does is it sits in the synapse so that the nicotine can't make the person, can't, uh, so the nicotine doesn't sit in those binders. And instead of it, you know, these, these receptor sites just screaming for more nicotine, something is setting in them to sort of appease them. And I can imagine these receptors would be pretty um, unhappy because they don't have the dopamine that they need to feel good. Um, this is an illustration of a, yeah, this is an illustration of what's referred, I referred to before as the pleasure pathway. So in here is your limbic system. This is where you have your memories, right? Your memories and your emotions. And there are a lot of dopamine receptors in here, which totally makes sense because if you're going to remember something, um, if you're going to remember something, and especially something that makes you feel good. So right in here, this part of the brain is very receptive to that very powerful, got to make you feel good level of dopamine. And then this moving up into your frontal lobe, which is your executive functioning, your planning, so you feel really good and you plan for doing that again, right? Yeah, yeah, and this is about crack cocaine. So what this means, what this is intended to illustrate is that this is the part of the brain that crack cocaine is activated or mm, affects the most. And it causes those, it, it um, gives one a sense of feel good, 
uh, in these parts of the brain where or which are really sensitive to feeling good. Okay, more of the same. These are more pictures from people's grocery co-op once upon a time. You've got a couple other neurotransmitters on here. Um, GABA is a, hang on here. So GABA is considered an inhibitor. This is what I was thinking about. It is an inhibitor um, because the more GABA you have, the more it slows the brain down, right? So you need more to get the effect. It's like the analogy I was talking about, the brake, right? The brake in the car. The more you put on the brake, the more the car slows down. So the more GABA you have, the slower the brain activity. Um, GABA is actually a long, uh, is actually short for a very long something, something, something acid. I've never, I've only a couple times I've actually seen the whole word GABA. So this, this slows brain activity. Uh, things that increase your level of GABA are alcohol, actually slows your brain down, right? And the reason we have blackouts and you don't remember things is quite literally your brain has slowed down to the point that you're not producing memories. You die from alcohol poisoning by slowing your brain down to a stop and you stop breathing. Valium increases brain, um, increases GABA, so it slows your brain down. Xanax, they all act to increase. And you can, as you see right here in this picture, you can actually buy GABA over the counter. Um, I've never tried it because I take another antidepressant. If I was a younger person, I'd consider trying it as a sort of way to chill yourself out, right? I mean, Xanax, I hear people take Xanax recreationally. This would be a, a much safer version of recreation. Endorphins, okay, so there's a mistake here. There should be, it's a typing error. Um, endorphins, you have endogenous endorphins and exogenous endorphins. This one right here. So the first one, endogenous, I -N, or E-N, meaning you make naturally occurring painkillers. This one should be an EX, which means these are external, um, externally ingested painkillers. So exogenous endorphins would be like um, various narcotics, um, oh gosh, morphine, all of those, morphine, cocaine, those kinds of things. Those would be exogenous painkillers, but your body naturally produces its own. We'll talk about this in another slide, but what happened, or another lecture, but what happens when you take these external ones is it's the same thing that happens with that synapse. When you ingest external painkillers, your body quits producing its own painkillers. So your prescription runs out and now you feel worse because your body's quit producing natural painkillers. Uh, glutamate, I think this is the only time we ever even talk about glutamate, but again, you'll see this little pair, you'll see this pattern here. You have, um, right, you have learning and memory, uh, kind of sort of the same thing. This is an excitatory neurotransmitter, but if you have too much of it, you start to like hallucinate, right? And schizophrenia is associated with hallucination. So you don't want too much. Um, another picture of the same thing, except this is like a different kind of picture of the, this one is dopamine again. Remember dopamine makes you feel really good. This is cocaine. So you have your vessels up here, they're releasing all the molecules floating across and binding. Cocaine comes along and blocks your reuptake. And there's a lot of cocaine receptors in this little memory and learning region of the brain. And so you feel really good and you remember it and you want to do it again. Um, this is a fun image right here. And then I think I'll wrap this uh, slide up. I'm going to leave it right here to see if you know what that is and from what country that is a cash crop. <laughs>